In today's video, I'm going over everything you need to know about the MGK ETF listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Hi everyone and welcome to the series on exchange traded funds or ETF investing, where I look into specific ETFs and show everything you need to know about the product offering before buying shares of the fund. ETFs are personally my favourite way to passively invest as it takes the stress and worry out of stock market investing, which can be very volatile with wild price swings holding individual stocks. We will go over the ETF fact sheet including the management fee, the index the ETF tracks, dividend yield, payment frequency and the fund's performance. I will also go over the top 10 holdings in the fund, as these typically make up the largest portion of the weightings and resulting performance of the ETF overall. It is always crucial to understand what you actually own in these ETFs before buying them. If there's any ETFs you are interested in and would like me to make a video on, write it down in the comment section below. MGK is an ETF provided by Vanguard, who own and operate the fund. Vanguard are the ones who actually own the underlying shares in the individual companies. So when we buy shares in the ETF, we buy from Vanguard, who continually issue new shares in an open-end fund, and not the individual companies inside the ETF. Now, MGK aims to track the performance of the CRSP US Mega Cap Growth Index, composed of what they deem as large growth companies currently included in the US stock market. The index and fund offers the potential for investment growth, where the aim is tilted towards capital gains instead of income. This does come with slightly more volatility, with the growth company's stock valuations rising and falling more sharply than other funds or bonds. Stick around to the end of the video where we'll see how good the performance and returns of MGK have been over time. To find the ETF in your brokerage account, you will need to type in the ticker code MGK to bring up the options to buy or sell shares in the fund. It pays distributions, which are dividends from the ETF, four times a year with a yield of 0.5% and has a management expense ratio or MER of 0.07% per year. So for every $10,000 invested, it will cost $7 per year in fees. This isn't a bill you see straight away. It is automatically deducted from how much money you have invested in the ETF. So you never really notice anything being paid or taken out of your brokerage account. Now, since this ETF tracks US growth companies, it is heavily tilted towards tech companies. The largest portion of the fund at 49% is in tech, followed by consumer discretionary at 25% and industrials at 13%. Telecommunications and consumer staple companies make up the smallest percentage of the fund under 1% each. If you're enjoying this style of video, feel free to give it a like to let me know and subscribe for more. Now when purchasing shares in an ETF, I like to have a basic understanding of the top 10 holdings, as these companies will have most of my money allocated to them, and they will end up driving the bulk of the fund's performance. So we'll quickly go over which companies are in the ETF's top holdings and what they do to make money. Visa is an American multinational financial services corporation headquartered in California. It facilitates electronic fund transfers throughout the world, most commonly through its Visa branded credit cards, debit cards and prepaid cards. Visa does not issue the cards, extend credit or set rate and fees for consumers. Instead, Visa makes money by providing financial institutions with Visa branded payment products that they then use to offer credit, debit, prepaid and cash access programs for their customers around the globe. PayPal is an American company operating an online payment system in the majority of countries that support online money transfers and serves as an electronic alternative to traditional paper methods like checks and money orders. The company makes money operating as a payment processor for online vendors, auction sites and many other commercial users. It charges a fee in exchange for benefits such as one-click transactions and password memory. NVIDIA is an American multinational company based in California. It makes money by designing and selling graphics processing units, or GPUs, for gaming and professional markets, as well as system-on-a-chip units, or SOCs, for the mobile computing and automotive market. In addition to GPU manufacturing, NVIDIA provides parallel processing capabilities to researchers and scientists that allow them to efficiently run high-performance applications. It produces Tegra mobile processors for smartphones and tablets, as well as vehicle navigation and entertainment systems. MasterCard is an American multinational financial services company headquartered in New York. Throughout the world, its primary business model is to process payments between the banks of merchants and the card issuing banks of the purchasers, who use the MasterCard brand debit, credit and prepay cards to make purchases. MasterCard makes money by charging financial institutions that issue the cards a fee based on the total dollar amount of activity. Consumers do not pay MasterCard directly, but to the issuing financial institution. Facebook is an American online social media and social networking service based in California. It was founded by Mark Zuckerberg along with fellow college students in 2004. 
Facebook sells ads on social media websites and mobile applications. Ad sales are the primary source of Facebook's revenue and it is experiencing increasing demand for advertising amid the shift to online e-commerce. Tesla is an American electric vehicle and clean energy company based in California. Tesla makes money selling its products including electric cars, battery energy storage from home to grid scale, solar panels and solar roof tiles, along with related products and services. The purpose of Tesla is to help expedite the move to sustainable transport and energy, obtained through electric vehicles and solar power. Alphabet is an American multinational conglomerate headquartered in California. It was created through a restructuring of Google in 2015 and became the parent company of Google and several former Google subsidiaries. Alphabet leverages its search, web browsing, and mobile operating systems to make money through the sale of advertising, apps, subscriptions, hardware, licensing, and service fees. Advertising generates the majority of revenue with Google Cloud also growing very fast. Microsoft is an American multinational technology company with headquarters in Washington. It makes money by developing, manufacturing, licensing and selling computer software, consumer electronics, personal computers and related services. Its best known software products are the Microsoft Windows line of operating systems, the Microsoft Office Suite and the Internet Explorer and Edge web browsers. Its flagship hardware products are the Xbox video game consoles and the Microsoft Surface lineup of touchscreen personal computers. Amazon is an American multinational technology company based in Washington. It makes money through its many business segments involved with e-commerce, cloud computing, digital streaming and artificial intelligence. Amazon was founded by Jeff Bezos in Washington during 1994. The company started as an online marketplace for books but expanded to sell electronics, software, video games, apparel, furniture, food, toys and jewellery. Apple is an American multinational technology company headquartered in California. It makes money by designing, developing and selling consumer electronics, computer software and online services. The company's hardware products include the iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, Apple TV, AirPods and the HomePod smart speaker. Apple develops software to run on all their hardware along with professional applications like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro and Xcode. Its online services include the iTunes Store, iOS App Store, Apple Arcade, Apple Music, Apple TV and iCloud. Now ETFs are considered to be low risk investments because they are low cost and hold a basket of stocks or other securities, increasing diversification. For most individual investors, ETFs represent an ideal type of asset which builds a diversified portfolio. Still, unique risks can arise from holding ETFs, as well as other special considerations paid to taxation depending on the type of ETF. Since inception, MJK has had an average annualised return of 13.2% before tax and a cumulative return of 427%, which goes to show the power of dividend reinvestment and compound interest, keeping the money invested growing faster over longer periods of time. Now, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, but it's always a good sign of consistently improving business fundamentals, continually driving each individual stock higher within the ETF. I prefer to look at the cumulative returns as it includes the dividends paid to shareholders, which should always be included as we're getting some value back, plus with the dividends reinvested, this is what provides the compounding effect, exponentially increasing our returns the longer we have our money invested in the fund. This is the sort of approach I take investing for the very long term using ETFs, and one day live off the investment portfolio as passive income through either dividends or selling down small parts of the position, but maintaining the bulk of the capital. If you want to see how these companies make money in detail, watch the playlist shown in the end screen. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ETF and whether you currently own any shares or plan to buy. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more investing and Tesla videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.